good morning and welcome back to the sanctuary as we're recording worship for the last Sunday in August. I can't believe, well, it's hot enough. I can definitely believe it's August, but wow, school's going to be starting next week. Um, my little boy, Ryan, is going to be starting kindergarten. He's extremely excited. He's going to go to Anderson Elementary and be an Anderson pioneer. He's extremely excited. He um, has an iPad now because all the learning is going to be done from home like right now. But he is so ready to get into it, get his iPad going every day. And the teachers are going to be doing Zoom with him. And he'll also have some work to do on his own time. Um, so we continue to pray for families, teachers, staff, administrators, everyone involved in the education system as well as, of course, higher learning. Uh, we're praying for them, uh, for those who are gathering in person for their safety, for those who are online, for them to have the technology they need, the uh, good internet sin signal, and all of the stuff they need so that they can continue learning. Uh, so that will be in our prayers later today. Um, coming up, uh, just after this, um, Jackie has brought flowers for this week, so you'll be able to see them in a moment. And I wanted to say thank you. Jan is here with our music. Um, Chuck is assisting minister today. And as always, Seth is here with um, all of this equipment back there. And he's recording and is putting our service together. And I know, don't you love the things, the extra things he puts in the, the, the video, like the scenes of mountains and rivers and all that? I've been getting so many comments about that. So, Excellent job, Seth. Thank you so much for being here recording and putting our service together. So this is a non-communion Sunday, so you'll need a couple of things. The bulletin that has the three hymns, and you'll need your celebrate insert. And so I think we are ready to go. We will begin with our gathering hymn. Jesus Christ, the love of God, 
and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So we turn now uh, to the prayer of the day um, in your celebrate insert near the top of the page. We will say that prayer together. O oh God, we thank you for your son who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue um, in our celebrate for the, the scripture readings today. Good morning. The first reading comes from the book of Jeremiah, the 15th chapter, beginning at the 15th verse. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice under the weight of your hand. I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you, turn, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. Here ends the reading. The psalm for today is Psalm 26. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worth worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving, and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. The second reading comes from the book of Romans, chapter 12, beginning at the ninth verse. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. 
Here ends the reading. Our gospel reading for today is from the gospel according to St. Matthew in the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So children's message, I'll be recording that separately and posting that for you. Um, it's time now for the adult sermon. We have a special guest preacher this week. After months of not being able to worship with congregations in person, it's been fun the last couple of Sundays to be present for a few installation services. Granted, they were small. The installation of Pastor Lenny Duncan and the installation of Pastor Gene DeVold Donaldson did not involve the congregation as a whole in person as it might have previously. But there was an online community and I was able to be in person, even if the laying on of hands and the blessing meant that it had to happen at a distance. Installations and ordinations that are now starting to occur are rituals that publicly mark the commissioning of a pastor, a community of faith and pastor together as they embark on a chapter of ministry together. The story of how a pastor and community of faith is called to partner together often involves a myriad of questions, wonderings, fears, anxieties, dreams, and faith. The story from Exodus is a prophetic commissioning scene. The story of Moses' call and God speaking through the burning bush is often referenced in scripture. It tells the calling of the first of all the Israelite prophets, the great leader of the Exodus, who confronted a powerful Pharaoh and led God's people, the Hebrew slaves, to freedom and on a wilderness journey toward the promised land. Moses, in this scene that we hear today, is not the powerful, idealized leader portrayed in scripture and art. Moses sounds a bit more like the person described in the song, Standing Still, by Jewel. Cutting through the darkest nights are my two headlights, trying to keep it clear, but I'm losing it here to the twilight. There's a dead end to my left. There's a burning bush to my right. You aren't in sight. You aren't in sight. In Exodus 2, Moses calls himself an alien re residing in a foreign land. Moses has never really been at home anywhere. 
Raised by his Hebrew mother, he was adopted by Pharaoh's daughter and given an Egyptian name. When he tries to intervene to help his kinfolk, the Hebrews, he ends up murdering an Egyptian and is rejected by his own people. Moses flees to Egypt and, and the mess he had created there, only to be identified as Egyptian by women he meets at the well in Midian. From the adopted son of royalty, Moses is now shepherding flocks, working for his father-in-law. I share Moses' backstory here because it's one that reminds us that this story is more about God's initiation, God's invitation, and God's equipping of one who God commissions. Verse 8 says, God comes down. God meets us where we are, even when we're not always where we should be. Moses is not necessarily where he should be either. But the sight of the burning bush and God's call will bring him out of isolation, sending Moses back to Egypt to lead the Israelite flock. But even for God, the task of getting Moses on track is no simple matter. Moses hid his face because he was afraid. One of my wonderings about this story is about Moses' fear. What was Moses afraid of? Was he afraid of the presence of God in the burning bush? I also wonder, did Moses' fear have something to do with what he feared God might be calling him to? Was he afraid he might not be worthy enough, good enough, capable, articulate, adaptable? Was he afraid of the future? Was he afraid of failure? These are all human fears we have. We all have fears of some kind. We can also have these fears in our lives as congregations. When congregations make decisions about their future, perhaps it is the call of a pastor about the direction of ministry or a potential partnership or even about mission priorities or budget concerns, we have fears about the future. We can have fears about the future, fear about that our congregation will die or not be relevant. Do we fear what our congregations might look like if they become more welcoming to our neighbors? Do we fear what our congregations will look like after the pandemic? Do we fear what our congregations might look like if others come and join us and help make decisions and bring their gifts? I know that sounds silly. Most congregations think they're pretty welcoming. Congregations often are places where people feel and experience God's love firsthand, where God's love abides and where people feel welcome. In the Christian Century article that came out this week, I read that while a number of multicultural, multiracial churches in which at least one out of every five members is from a minority background grew from 6% in 1998 to 16% in 2019, during that time, these same congregations didn't become more racially diverse. African-American membership in them declined between 2012 to 2019. Multiracial congregations typically have white leadership, quoted the article, and worship style more attuned with white ways of worship. I wonder if this reflects our fears. How does this relate to our fears? When we think about our congregational ministry, when we think about worship, will an openness to gifts of diversity in our congregation change what I feel is most precious? Will it mean we sing songs I don't know or like? Does it mean I will lose what I know and hold most dear or value? Will I lose my place of privilege if we welcome others? Am I, are, am I afraid of the future at this moment because it's largely unknown? Are we afraid of a future that seems so precarious at this time? 
There's many fears congregations can name. It's powerful to name the fears that face us because in doing so, those fears have less power over us. There's much to fear in these days. And I invite you this week to name the fears you have. By naming the fears we have, we can make space for God's promises, God's love, God's presence. By naming and claiming the fears we hold, we make space to talk about how it is that God's love wants to break into those fears and move and claim us despite them. Moses' first objection in Exodus is that he questions his own identity. Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Moses here seems to fear his authority in the face of a powerful Pharaoh. Then he speaks to fears that he might not have the right words. Yet God promises, I will be with you. I am who I am, says God. And God gives Moses the words that speak to God's faithfulness throughout the generations. God's work is aligned and intertwined with human agency, just as Moses saw the Egyptian beating a Hebrew and Pharaoh's daughter saw the child and heard him crying, and also as God observed and saw the misery of God's people. God doesn't watch idly or passively, but moves to action. Seeing, knowing, and acting is a very part of the identity of God. As much as Moses' identity emerges from his past, so God's actions in the present emerge from God's commitments to the ancestors. The God of Exodus is one who remains faithful to the covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The commissioning of Moses isn't limited to prophets or pastors. God commissions each one of us to do God's work in our daily lives. This may happen in unnoticed ways we care for our neighbors or in ways we feel called to make commitments or take new directions in ministry as congregations as we vote together and make public declarations. Where are you experiencing God's commissioning for you in these days? How is God speaking to you? Though it may not be through a burning bush, where do you hear God's voice most clearly? Unlike human commitments that waver and fade, God's identity will be constant, even while Moses is tending sheep on an isolated mountain and when we live in a pandemic-related isolation from one another. God will be known in God's future faithfulness to Moses and the people. I will be with you, God promises. Let us hear the word of promise and commission in our daily lives. And know we are not alone. The one who is with us will remain with us, even when we acknowledge our fears and dare to speak them to one another. Let us live in the promise that God is still speaking to us and commissioning us for service for the sake of the world God so loves. Amen. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and
Prayers of Intercession are found on the back page of the Celebrate Insert. Confident of your care and helped by, its holy, by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of faithfulness, you bid your people to follow Jesus. Set the mind of your church on divine things. Grant us trust in you, and we lose our lives for the sake of Christ, and thereby discover joy in life through him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in it. Heal your creation and give us eyes to see the world as you do. As the seasons change, pattern the rhythm of our lives in harmony with all creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all nations, you call us to live peaceably with all. Give us ears to hear one another, even those we name as enemies. Fill all leaders with mercy and understanding, that they advocate and generally care for those who are poor and most vulnerable in the communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of salvation, you promised to deliver us. Give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany those who are uncertain. Raise the spirits of those who are despairing and heal the sick. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, you call us to rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, and persevere in prayer. Make our congregation a workshop of your love. When we quarrel, bring reconciliation. Help us overcome evil with good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The request, requested prayers for this week are, we pray for Pastor Lydia, who will be having eye surgery on August 27th, Cheryl, who is recovering from eye surgery, Eugene, Dane, Jane, Mary and Dan, Joyce, Gladys, Sharon, Ted, and Mary Harlan. We also pray, pray for those who are known to us who are dealing with health issues. Mary's friend, Mara, Sue's friend, Janice, Leandra's cousin, Gary, wife, Vicki, and son, Kyle, recovering from COVID-19 at home. Sarah, Bruce's wife and Jordy and Charlotte's mom. Caroline's son, Jody. Jackie's friend, Jim. Richie's brother, Brian. And Terry asking for prayers for Ed and Jerry. 
for our nation and world dealing with ongoing crises, including COVID-19, political and racial distress, including the shooting of Jacob Blake, now in serious condition in Kenosha, Wisconsin. For school districts, teachers, staff, and families, praying for safety and for adequate resources to be available for everyone. For those struggling with unemployment and underemployment, for those affected by natural disasters, including California wildfires and Gulf Coast storms. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, you give us ever everlasting life. In love, we recall, recall your holy ones who now live in your undying light. In our remembering, give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the triune God be with you all. We share, we say thank you, Jesus, for giving us your spirit. Draw us into your peace. Draw us away from our worries and simply renew us and let us rest in you. Thank you for your spirit giving us that peace and drawing us together as your community, even as we listen from home. So this is uh, the time we usually receive our offering. I want to say thank you as always for all of you who are continuing to send us your offering money. Uh, we still have the bills coming in every month and we're very grateful uh, that in this time, especially with unemployment and underemployment, uh, for all of you who are able to continue to give, thank you so much for doing that. Um, you can drop off your check in the church mailbox. You can mail it to the church. Uh, either way, we'll get that. We'll record it in uh, the software to give you credit, and we'll get that to the bank for deposit. So thank you so much. We will now listen to Jan's offering music. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and fill you with peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing now our sending song. to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day see the brightness of God. I want to look at Jesus. Clear sun of righteousness shine on my path and show me the way to the Father. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the Thanks be to God. We'll see you next week. The songs, the message, everything. The people. And the people. Yep, I miss the socializing. Yeah. Yeah. The hugs. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. The good many people we have there. Of course, we've survived this long. (laughs) (laughs) Very true, Mom. (laughs) Not really this thing to end real quick quick some answers pray for this all gets over sometime soon (laughs) so we can be together again we're praying for all of you just love and miss you all everyone yeah